Welcome back to another DaVinci Resolve video editing tutorial. In this video, we're going to be doing some basic video editing in the Edit tab of DaVinci Resolve. Uh, and so I'm just going to, here, when it first opens up, I'm going to click on New Project, and we'll make a new project called TJ Free. And so I'll create this, and then I'll just resize the window here so you can see it uh, conveniently in your screen. I'm using a, a widescreen monitor, and so this helps it just display better for the video. Um, so we see here we have our media pool. It says no clips in media pool. Uh, and we have our timeline here. We have a couple different viewer windows. I'm going to actually drag and drop. Yours might even look a little different than this. If it does, that's okay. But to get this media pool to appear, if we click this, the media pool disappears. Click media pool again and it appears. So make sure it's, it's white up here. It's selected and make sure we can see this actual media pool. And then I'm just going to open up and drag some video in. I'll, I'll just left click and drag a few. When I bring in the first one, it says the clips you have uh, that I'm trying to import have a different frame rate than my project. I can either say don't change or change. I'm going to say change because uh, then that'll help everything work well with my project because these videos, I think most of them have the same uh, frame rate. So I'm going to left click and bring a few of these in. So now I've got four video clips that I've, I've brought into my media pool. So I'm going to minimize this now. Um, oh, actually, I'll show you real quick. Um, under Windows, if you right-click on a video and go down to Properties, it brings up this dialog. You can click on Details, and you can see the information if you're curious about your video type. Uh, so this is 1920 by 1080. The frame rate is 29.97. So that's some good information to know. We can also find the same information from within DaVinci Resolve by clicking on the file and going over here to Metadata. So if we click Metadata, it brings up a box here that tells us the information about this file. So sure enough, 1920 by 1080, the frames per second, um, the codecs used, and just some information. So we can look at metadata from about audio files, video files, lots of different um, things that we're working with in um, Resolve. There's always this metadata option over here in the top right. And again, if the media pool is not there, if we don't want to see it, we can click it and the media pool will go away. Click media pool again and it appears. So if we hover over these, the, the well, first of all, let's make this video a little bit bigger. If, I, if we click here, this little ball, we can left click and hold it, and we can resize these up. So we'll do it to about there so we can see them nice. And then if I hover over uh, a video, so if we hover over this one here, it'll just show it in this playback window. So I can find a certain part of this video just by, I'm not clicking or anything, I'm just hovering over. So if I like this part here, I can double click, and then it brings us to that part. It shows us here that part of the video, and I can click play and start watching from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then if I like this part, if I like this part of the video, well, right now it's just doing the whole video, so I have a couple options. To get this down into the timeline, I can just left click and drag from here into the timeline, and this video will now be in the timeline. And then it will also appear over here, so I can actually play and watch the video What's happening in my video project is over here, and what's happening in my media pool is happening over here on the left-hand side. So that lets me look at a video quickly and see if I want to get it, and if I do want to get this part of the video into my actual project, I can left-click and drag it down into here as well. And I can either put it on a separate track, or I can go over to the end of this one and do it on the same track. I'm gonna hit backspace to delete that video clip, and I'll hit backspace on this one again to delete this one. Um, because another way I want to show you is we can just drag and drop directly from the media pool also into the timeline and we can get the video in that way as well. Um, another thing that saves a lot of time and maybe you've used this with other video editing software you can actually just drag in so we'll drag this into our viewer window and then we can click play and if you press the I key on your keyboard at any point so I'll press I right now it kind of highlights, and so I have a dot here highlighted to the end of the video, and if I press the O key on my keyboard, it stands for like in and out, so that's the in and out part of the video. So now I have a part selected here, in and out. I can um, left click and drag this down, and now it only brings in that part of the video that I have the in and out under. So instead of bringing in the whole video, it just brings in that portion. Also, if I wanna adjust, I can um, click here on the end and left click, and I can adjust the length of it. 
if I want to get in a little bit earlier, so if, the, if it starts here and I want a, a little bit before what's happening there, I can left click and go earlier in the video as well. To move the video around the timeline, I can just left click and drag and move it around the timeline. So if I want to get a portion of this video, then I want to get a portion of this one here, I can just play, I can hit the I key, hit the O key, and then I can drag in just that couple seconds of video. And now I have these two parts of video. The timeline shows 0, 0 all the way over to the left. So I'm going to want my video to start right there. I can left click and move it over and left click and move this one over. So now I have, oh, I don't have snapping enabled. So snapping is pretty important too. That's this button right here. So if we click on that and it's white, it's enabled, that's going to let us snap. So this will automatically snap to the nearest, the next video I bring it up against, as opposed to just like cutting in and eating up that video, like over overlapping it. So I'm going to turn on snapping and just snap it oops, right to the end of that video. And I can also snap to the, to the playhead, which is cool. So if I want it to snap right here, it'll also snap right to the playhead on either end. So that's the snapping feature. If I want to cut up, so I can resize the length of the video, but if I want to actually cut up the video, I can use this razor tool. So if I hover over, or I guess it's called blade, so I cl left click on blade, and now wherever I come to, if I left click, it will split the video right where I clicked. So now if I come back to this selection mode, I can then move these around, and now I have some different video. So I might, maybe I want to put this part at the very beginning, and then have this here, and then this here. Um, so now if I play this, it should play back, and it looks like this, and it jumps to this part of the video, then it jumps back to that part of the video. Uh, the audio portion is shown down here below, so we see the video and the audio. Um, we can change the size of these tracks by clicking here, and then we can go to uh, track height. We can make the video much larger or smaller. We can make the audio teeny tiny or larger again. Um, we can change the how, how zoomed in we are on the timeline. So if we're working with like two hours of video footage, we'll want to zoom way, way, way out so we can see it all. But in this case, we're only working with like 10 seconds, so we'll want to zoom in closer and see what's happening there. And when we're zoomed in, we can kind of scroll along by left clicking down here on this scroll bar to, to view the extents of our video project. You can also hold down the Alt key and use the scroll wheel to change the timeline. Or you can just uh, zoom in. Or you can do, um, I think it's is it Control or Shift. There's another way you can, oh, oh, uh, holding down the scroll wheel. So holding down the scroll wheel, we can kind of pan around the timeline and then uh, Alt, and then using the scroll wheel, we can zoom in and out um, another way besides just clicking up here. Uh, what else? So these other options here, if we hover over or just click it, so this lets us um, change differently. So the selection mode lets us actually move the clips around, but this mode here lets us click and actually move the part of the video that's being uh, shown within this space. Does that make sense? So if we wanted to change a little bit, we can scroll through there and we can see the audio and that everything changes as well. And that's if we select up in here. If we select down here, uh, let me zoom out a little bit by, I'll just click up here. So I'll zoom out. If we go down in the blue portion of the video and left click, we can actually move this clip around relative to these other two without, without creating some extra space. Does that make sense? So if we move this forward, the clips all stay there, so we have less of this clip now and more of this clip, but this one stays the same size. Uh, we can come over here to the selection mode and go between the two and kind of do a similar thing where we make this one shorter on the left and the one on the right a little bit longer. So that's an option for that. Play with some of that. Um, I think that's all we should really do in this video here. Well, just be aware you can have different video tracks, I suppose, too. So if we were to drag and if we were to move this up top, then it would play over top of this one, but we'd hear the audio for both of them. So if we hit play now, it'll play a second of this and then it'll play whatever's on top. So the uppermost track will get played, um, has priority. You can use that a lot if you're doing like video slide. If you wanna have a video and then have a picture be shown on top, you can do that as well. That's all we're gonna do in this video here. And if we wanted to render this video out now, just like it is, we would click over here on the deliver tab and then we would choose a file name. So I'll, I'll call it um, TJ Free. 
and we'll click on browse and choose a, a place to save it. Maybe I'll save it on my desktop. I'll just call it TJ Free and hit save. And then it will do my file extension for me. So I'll choose a format. I can do QuickTime, I can do um, MP4, maybe I'll change mine to MP4 and we'll do H.264. And then the resolution I want it to be at. So uh, I could do 1280 by 720. I could do 1920 by 1080 since my source is that size. I believe it'll do upscaling for you as well if you have a, a smaller source file. Keep my frame rate at 29.97. Uh, perfect, and then I just click Add to Render Queue, and it brings it over here, and it shows it in my render queue. So I can go back and do some more editing and get a whole uh, lineup of videos to render here. But if I want to render just this one, I'll click Start Render, and it will go through, render this whole video, and it should be created now on my desktop right here. And we can click and just play this video that we've created, and here it is. So just a quick little video that we um, created and rendered using DaVinci Resolve. In the next video, uh, we're going to look at how to cut, copy, move clips, and do um, just get a little more familiar with this timeline. But hopefully this wasn't too confusing. Um, as you watch other videos, hopefully it will become more and more clear. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this informative, and I'll catch you in the next video.